I'm here in an area of the Hinesburg Town Forest where we did some forest management between 2018 and 2020 and just marveling at this incredible miracle of regeneration, the way that the forest has regenerated and showed its resilience and just filled all of the spaces created by the trees that we cut with new trees and plants, this incredible flush of diversity that follows a disturbance in the forest. One of the common misconceptions about forests is that when a tree dies or when we cut a tree that we are in some way losing something. And while it may seem sad to see the death of an individual tree, when you look at forests in a more expansive way, if we allow ourselves to reimagine forests as these complex systems, which are not just trees, but also animals and birds and plants and fungi and bacteria and invertebrates, these, these incredibly complex and resilient and beautiful systems, which change over time, see that the death of a tree can actually be incredibly generative. This year, as I've taken a harder look at the way that our forest birds are utilizing forest habitats, I've really drilled down on this idea of structure. So what is structure? When we think about species diversity, we're thinking about the different species of trees that are present in our forest. When we think about structural diversity, what we're really thinking about is the way that those tree species are growing. There are two different types of structural diversity, also called structural complexity. There's vertical structural diversity and horizontal structural diversity. A forest has horizontal structural diversity if there are pockets of trees of different sizes and ages within the forest. So having horizontal structural diversity means that we have habitat for bird species or other species that may utilize a young forest, a middle-aged forest, an old forest, and the different species of plants and trees that comprise those different forest ages. A forest with vertical structural diversity actually has all of those sizes and ages of trees interspersed with one another. So what we see instead of there being a forest with all the trees that are the same size and the same age is actually all of these different canopy layers. And when you look at bird habitat, you'll see that many of what we call the mature forest birds, the forest birds that are associated with, with older forests are actually associated with not this even aged forest where all the trees are canopy height and there's no light reaching the forest floor, but actually these very, very structurally diverse forests with all of these different layers of vegetation within the canopy. As we're trying to provide habitat for all of our forest birds and of course all of our other forms of biodiversity, having both horizontal structural diversity and vertical structural diversity are integral to protecting a wide range of our forest birds. Here at the Hinesburg Town Forest, we took stands that are pretty much even aged and we created both vertical structural diversity by harvesting individual trees and pockets of trees and also horizontal structural diversity by going into some of these old plantations and creating larger patch openings, an acre, two acres, some of which are big enough to attract some of our early successional forest birds. So as I walk through this area of the Hinesburg Town Forest five years after the management that we did here, I'm excited not just by the species of trees that are here, the sugar maple and the red oak, and the herbaceous plants and all of the other species that have responded in the wake of our management, but also by the shape of this forest, the structural diversity, the way that it's growing.